Here's our fresh XP install with all the updates. Um, open in your Explorer. I'm going to type uh, or connect for the server. So minus call deep server slash connect. You'll see this window pop up. You don't want to download the software. And then you're going to want to click run. Hit yes. Open the UAC dialog. And then click next again. Uh, like I said, we already installed all the updates at Framework 4 and everything. So we're OK here. Uh, this part can take a while. It says we're here up to 30 minutes. So we're going to wait for that to finish. Alright, so here comes the username and password screen. You do not have to use the administrator account. You just have to use the account that's going to be used on the computer. So even your staff can sign in here. You can use the John Doe staff account to sign in uh, to register with the domain. Alright, so now we have to restart the computer. So we'll just click restart. So preparing desktop finishes up. And then it's going to ask you if you want to move your user data from the old account onto your domain account. I just hit OK because it was a fresh install. There was anything on there. But you can just uncheck the box if you don't want to. Then you can uh, modify the description. I'm just going to call this the front desk computer here. Uh, you can even put the person's name, whose computer it is. And then they will ask you if you want to turn the computer on and back up or leave it off. I just put yes. And then, no, I don't want to participate in customer experience improvement. And then wait for this configuring part to finish. Might take a while. All right, so the computer's connected. Now uh, you see the checkbox to open the dashboard. Uh, you can only do that if you have the administrator username and password. So. If this is your staff member checking the box, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. Uh, so here, let's go on um, using the staff credentials. Remember, I made the John Doe account in the other video. So I'm going to log in. And here's Windows 7. Uh, using the John Doe's account. So, yeah, see, to access the dashboard, you need to authenticate using the administrator username and password. So, you can try to log in and change something, but it's not going to work. But yeah, here's the famous SBS Essentials Launchpad. Where you can change settings, but see, I logged in with my administrator account. And then I can access the dashboard. It uses like a TS remote web apps. So I thought that was kind of neat. Just the window. And then you can change all the dashboard settings. But we already set everything up, so I'm just going to close it. But yeah, here's the launch pad. Uh, one of the more famous things about SBS. You can uh, access all the shared folders from here, remote web access, and backup. 
think it's probably easier to window a seven right here to get this staff stuff. So like shareholders can see amazing charts and the company folder, which we set up. Uh, the remote web access should be working right now. I said it would take like an hour or so. So I'm gonna just see if it is working. And there you go. There's remote web access working. Uh, you can tell it's going through the internet too. Look at the SSL certificate uh, tied to the domain name. So this person could log in and access their computer remotely. Ideally, this would be for you, but just say it was a staff member. And yeah, there you go. Uh, so, no, this staff member can't access any computers. You do have to enable remote desktop if you want to remote into your own computer. You do that in the properties of your computer of remote settings, but not. You can just look up how to do it. Here's our show, shared company folder. And you're like, oh, this is just a warning about virus protection. Like I said, this is a fresh install. There's nothing on here, but it's that waffles folder with the file I made earlier. So. I don't know, my sharing is working. Uh, go ahead and uh, press the backup if you want to, but it's already scheduled to happen automatically. All right, so I'm going to load up amazing charts on a client right now. I'm not going to show the install steps because We've already done them before. So choosing yes, it's the main computer. You choose no, it's not the main computer. So we're starting up right here. And uh, we have to direct it to our databases when it asks, asks us for it. All right, so click next. And um, you have to go to your network. Um, one thing that was interesting, network discovery wasn't turned on when, after we ran the connect version. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Right now. And for some reason, this server isn't showing up. I'm only seeing my computer right now. So, I'm pretty sure if you restarted the computer, it would uh, find all the stuff on the network. But you can also just type it in manually. I'm just going to check the network settings. That was interesting, that was on domain. Uh, network discovery wasn't turned on. So, uh, what I'm going to do is just type it in manually up at the top. I know my server's name, so I'm just going to type double backslash deep server. And there's amazing charts. So, just click our amazing chart share. I'm pretty sure this would have worked if we restarted because we just turned on network discovery. So I'm just going to click our amazing charts XML file and then it's going to connect to our server and you can log in after that. Uh, you're going to see an error right now. What happens if port 61067 didn't open on your server? 
if you skip the end of the last video, part three, go back and watch it again. You'll see how to open the SQL port on the server. So, uh, go do that real quickly. So I've opened the port. I'm going to try it again. Let's double click amazing charts. And you'll notice this time it connected to the database after the port was open. So if you're getting that here, go back to the end of part three to see how to fix it. So yeah, there's my username. I'm just going to log in real quickly to prove it. It's working. And there we go. Amazing charts is up and running. That's, that's about it. It's the end of part four. Uh, joining the client to the domain.